I'm Maggie Williams, editor of Pensions Insight magazine. I'm here with Mark Fawcett, Chief Investment Officer of the National Employment Savings Trust, NEST. Mark's also one of our 50 most influential people in pensions. I started off by asking Mark about NEST's fund range. Yes, there's a lot of behavioural economics research which shows that members tend to make better decisions if they're given some clear choices and not too much choice. Um, so the more the choices, the numbers of choices increase, the more people tend to go into the default fund because they're confused um, and can make no decision. So we had a principle fairly early on that we'd keep the fund range very focused, s starting with the design of a default fund, the Nest Retirement Date Funds, and then having some complementary choices around that. What sort of uptake do you expect for the higher risk and lower growth funds? Well, the evidence for auto-enrolled schemes tends to suggest that 80 to 90 percent of people will go into the default fund, either through choice or because they make no decision. So the remaining 10 to 20 percent are likely to be in the other four to five fund choices. How do you expect the content of the ethical fund to differ from the retirement date funds, given that you have signed up to the UNPRI? The, um, so signing up to the UNPRI was, was basically a decision by the trustees that we wanted to be responsible investors across our fund range um, and to be actively engaged um, owners of, of assets. But in addition to that, the ethical fund will be screening out uh, companies uh, that are considered unethical by you know, typical uh, members and we've done some research as to what sort of things are important to our members, in particular human rights, labour practices around the world. So the Ethical Fund will be screening out um, companies that sort of uh, 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 have less good practices in those areas. There has been comment from other parts of the industry that, even given its target audience, Nest's investment strategy is too conservative in targeting CPI plus 3% in the growth phase. What's your response to that? We believe that risk management is the most important thing when it comes to investing and we're looking to implement a diversified strategy which manages the risk through the whole of a member's savings career. Now in the growth phase, which is going to be the driver of, of generating investment returns, CPI plus 3 we think is a good balance between taking sufficient risk to deliver uh, acceptable retirement incomes and not having too much risk so that you have a large dispersion of returns uh, amongst different cohorts of investors. So the profile of CPI plus 3 typically will have about 70% in return seeking assets and 30% in more defensive assets. And we think that's uh, an acceptable risk and will deliver sufficient returns. You've announced that there will be diversified beta complementing the range of investment funds announced earlier in the year. Can you explain what Diversified Beta is and how it will be used as part of the investment strategy? So Diversified Beta is one of our return seeking funds, so it's primarily in growth assets and in particular uh, it complements our passive global equity mandate. Um, so the, the main assets in it are emerging market equities and debt, uh, corporate bonds, both high yield and investment grade, and there'll also be some property in there. So it's a range of assets, but not just uh, in the equity space, but in a whole variety of other areas. You've said that there will be a reference glide path for de-risking the retirement date funds, but that the trustees will be able to dynamically manage this according to market conditions. How well do you think the dynamic approach will protect members from loss if, say, we had another year like 2008? The principal means of, of managing risk is diversification. And uh, in itself, diversification, true diversification, um, allowed investors to at least navigate more smoothly the stormy waters of 2008. So just by having, for example, gilts and cash in the, return, in the growth phase portfolio, um, as well as equities and uh, corporate bonds, uh, the returns would have been smoother. Now, the trustees' reference glide path and management around that are very much focused on risk management. So as to how exactly we would have done in 2008, no, it's easy possibly to say of hindsight what we might have done going, you know, if we encounter those sort of conditions going forward, we'll be very much focused on managing risk for members, trying to smooth returns, but clearly, uh, you know, there will still be some volatility.